Welcome to Inside Campbell Basketball with Campbell head coach Kevin McGann. I'm Chris Sammeyer. Got a great show for you today. We'll go over highlights of the two-game sweep over the weekend. Campbell coming out victorious. We'll have some fun and some games with the guy, and then we'll get set for Campbell's national TV 2021 debut as Campbell takes on Asheville on ESPNU. Coach, your team had to dig deep to take those two wins, two come-from-behind wins. What did you learn from your squad after that two-game sweep? Well, I think, you know, the biggest thing was that, you know, we had been in that situation just the week before, you know, where we had had a game that was kind of in the balance and, and um, you know, we didn't come out on the right side. So, you know, we spent a lot of time over the course of, you know, the preparation for uh, this past weekend um, trying to be better at executing and figuring out how to finish. and. Um, and then that, that, that showed itself, and we were able to do that. And, um, you know, that as a coach, that, that makes you, you know, happy that the things that you're working on um, translate. Um, but there was a lot of toughness from a lot of different guys that, that, that ended up playing into that. You know, there was an execution component, and then there was also just a, a general toughness that, that I think we showed. And um, just real proud of, of the way they performed and, and that we were able to come out on top. That toughness was on display. We'll go to Friday night. Campbell taking on Charleston Southern in the preseason player of the year. And for Campbell coming out firing in their orange jerseys. And boy, what a game from pretty much everybody. You know, the headline, Cedric Henderson Jr., 23 points, five boards. Jordan Whitfield, nine points and seven rebounds. But how about Josh Lusain, the chief, nearly a triple-double coach, 10 points, nine assists, and seven rebounds. Yeah, I mean... Chief was tremendous. Um, he he played really really poised, and um, you know the passing stands out. Gosh, nine assists, um, and to be that close to a triple double, um, really impressive. He he played really well, and you know I, I was I was pleased with his sort of response. You know we we, we kind of challenged him um, during the week, and you know focus on rebounding, and um, I think both both he and Cedric um, showed a lot in how they attacked the glass through the course of the of the series. Four guys on your team with five or more rebounds. Obviously, we talked about making that a priority. But then here it is, Ricky Clemens at the end of the game. Okay, you guys are down two here with 29 seconds. Talk about this play. Yeah, we you know, we, we had been working on this because we, we wanted to make sure that we got a shot. You know, we, we had a few situations against Radford where we didn't exactly execute well. We actually got ourselves to a situation where we got a shot that we can make. Uh, Cedric, I think his feet were a little bit um, disorganized there, um, but still a shot he makes. And then Chief with an unbelievable offensive rebound, um, throws it out to Ricky. He had poise. He was calm. He, he just knew what he could do. He kind of took his time and then attacked hard and then, you know, gets the N1, which was a, a huge game-winning play and converts the free throw to, you know, to put us up with uh, 10 seconds there, so huge. And, huge and this play. free throw doesn't doesn't touch rim. They needed the three point play to go in the lead, and then here it is. Ricky Clemens hits the shot and the free throw of his life, and then he has to play defense on one of the best players in the league. Yeah, no question. Um, and there's a reason why we have him on on Fleming here um, because that's a near impossible shot which he can make, um, but he did a great job making it difficult for him kind of knowing he was going to be the guy and then terrific job uh, on the glass boxing out there to make sure that we got the that we got the stop and the win. I mean that was one of those games you know you feel like you've been in a prize fight you guys came away it's emotional win for the guys and that I mean we, we were out of breath at the broadcasters <laughs> uh, booth so then what do you say in the locker room what happens in the next 12 hours because you got to get ready to play the exact same team again in 22 hours. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think an emphasis on the things that we, that we did well to make sure that we won the game. Obviously, there were, you know, there were good and bad plays, and, and every single game, win or lose, we evaluate the game. Um, and so we'll take a look at that, and we did that the next, uh, the next morning uh, prior to shoot-around. Um, tried to make some adjustments. Um, you know, it was like one of those deals. <clears throat> I think the, 
Chris Clark from from the news had had said, you know, how long do you how long do you get to enjoy this? I said probably through my post game sandwich, and then, you know, you have to start looking at the at the next one, which is the same opponent. Um, and so we we know you know we knew there were going to be some adjustments. I think we felt like we could have um, we played well, but we could have made we just didn't make as many shots as we usually do. You know, we got good looks that we didn't make, and so felt relatively confident that if we played well again on the offensive side of the ball that we would that we would make some more shots and that it would be a little bit of a different game and you know of course it it was a larger margin at the end but you know going down 10 at the half was a, a challenge and you know um, I think our guys really responded there and the proof is in the highlights from Saturday again we're turning right around and that's why it's so unique back-to-back -back games in conference and your guys really turning it on in the second half. Henderson, 18 points, nine rebounds. Jordan Whitfield, 16 points, four boards, and three assists. And I'll point out Josh Lusain again. So he follows up his near triple-double with a double-double, 12 points, 12 boards. But I thought this one, Coach, offensively, everybody getting in on it. There's G with a tough shot. Messiah came off the bench for mm. 10 points. And Milo Stacic off the bench with six good points. Everybody played well for you, and, and you needed it in the second half. Yeah, no question. Um, you know, I think w one of the things that we, we talked about at halftime of that game was like, uh, I think they went up five, so a second a second possession ahead, uh, late first half, and I felt like we, we got a little antsy. Um, there were guys that were pressing a little bit to try to make a play, trying to um, do a little more than they, than they necessarily needed to. And we just talked about trusting each other in the second half, just trust each other. We don't need heroes. Um, you know, heroes emerge when everything, when everybody's playing together. And, and so that's, that's all that it was. The guys really, I thought both games we played really well defensively. And then I think that, that stuff, just staying together and, and trusting each other was, was huge down the stretch of, of that second half in, in order for us to take the lead and then calmly um, kind of take care of the game at the end. Yeah. And down 10 at halftime, but it really wasn't a nail biter at the end because of what you guys did. So many heroes in this two day stretch, but Cedric Henderson Jr. getting Big South Player of the Week, uh, nearly 21 points per game, over seven boards, which I know probably makes you more excited than anything. And you looked into your crystal ball last week on the show. You, you said this, you said, you know, Cedric doing so many things well, he's a much better three point shooter than he's showing. That's going to come. It certainly came. What does that do to your team and his game when he can do that? Yeah, I, I really believe that if he starts to make a few more threes, um, he's, he's very, very effective from the mid-range. I mean, his pull-up is really good. He's pretty darn good getting to the basket, you know, um, and, and getting fouled or scoring. And he, you know, all last season he made lots of threes. So this season he hasn't quite hit his user stride body in that area. He's starting position. to come Henderson. Bit, I think if... You know, when I saw him yesterday and congratulated him on the honor, I said, we kind of like laughed. We're like, yeah, and not even, he's not even playing his best still yet. You know, like there's still more in there, you know, like in, in the fact that he's um, probably, you know, assists and turnovers aren't quite where they can be or are for his ability and, and um, you know, kind of laughed like, you know, I think the best is yet to come. Definitely. Congratulations to him. And uh, okay, coach is used to this, but this segment's going to make you all feel old out there. The majority of our players weren't even born in the 90s. Those that were, they were very small. So we do a little fun game called the 90s game where we try to get them to guess stuff that from you and me and you out there, what we knew about, they don't. So here's the 90s games with our guys. I'm Dre Burton. I'm born in 2001. This is an MP3 player. The Magic School Bus. It's like a like an orange runny thing. I don't know what it is. I have no clue. It, it's, it looks like one of those things that like light up like with different colors or whatever. I don't know. It's, it's, the football. Remember the Titans? My name is PJ Carter and I was born in 2001. <laughs> Uh, he has a big green head with big teeth and a golden tie. Uh, I would say this is Green Goblin, but I know that's not who this is. 
this is a TV show or a movie. Um, it looked like it's our Disney Channel. But um, I don't know this one either. Um, the three dudes in the back on the phone, uh, two ladies on the phone in the front. Um, this guy acting like he on the phone. And yeah, the outfits are terrible. Uh, um, I just wanted them a little erase, uh, um, little, a toy that erases when you draw. Oh, it's a toy where um, you draw on it and you use the little, the little thing like that to erase. I don't know the name of the toy, so do I still get points for that? Hey, I know this one. I know this one. I think so. It's um some baby dolls, but I don't, I don't know the name. Um. The baby doll in the middle it had like a gap with uh, some on her head is blue. Um, yeah, these are bad baby dolls. Though. All right, back to stuff on the court. It, it never ends, Coach. You, you turn right around. You have to go up to the mountains to take on Asheville, a team who is in third place. You guys just two games back, and you have two games with them, including this Thursday night, 7 p.m. national TV on ESPNU. What challenges do they present? Uh, they're dynamic. I mean, they, um, you know, they're, they're probably not pressing quite as much as they did last year, but still that's a major factor in the game. Uh, they press a lot, um, trying to force turnovers, trying to control tempo with pressure. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of first and foremost. You, you really need to go into that game and be able to handle the, what's coming at you in the full court. Um, so they're talented, and they're actually playing a little bit different in that they they have a um, a transfer, a graduate transfer, I believe, um, who's like more of a an interior presence. Like last year, they you know played often with Cody Jude at center, and you know so they were really five out, and that pr presents a whole bunch of, of challenges. And they still do that at times, but um, this kid Claiborne's like a legit big guy that's tough and physical and rebounds the ball. Um, and you know they're they've had like Devon Baker's been kind of in and out because he was injured and now he's back, and some of the other guys have really stepped up this year when he's been out. Um, Tejon Jones is playing terrific, lights out. I think he's like the second or third three point shooter in the country. Um, they have shooting at a lot of positions. Um, you know, L J Thorpe's a handful, kind of a hybrid, a little bit like a like a Jesus in that he can pass and. There's some toughness. He's he's very versatile. They're a really really solid team with like a lot of good players. Um, we're gonna have to go in there and play well, handle the pressure, and and be poised. Um, hopefully take a step um, from you know what we and build on from what we did this weekend. And you'll be able to see it on national TV. Campbell at UNC Asheville on ESPNU for Campbell head coach Kevin McGann. I'm Chris Samar saying so long. This has been Inside Campbell Basketball. I feel